Welcome everyone to the Temple of Tomes. I'm your host, Indie Comics Jones, and this is episode four on May 19th, 2020. Hope you're all doing really well out there. I uh, just want to let you know that I feel like I'm getting better at doing this, and uh, hopefully I will improve with each episode. I know I've seen, looks like there's been a few viewers, uh, no, no subscriptions yet, so you can be the first. Hey, be a first in your life. Um, really, what I want to talk about, though, is, um, you know, it's 91 degrees out. I'm trying to stay in shape during this time. The gym's closed still, and... I am keeping the day job. I'm not going to give that up, so don't worry about that. Uh, as bad as I'm at this, I'm pretty good at my regular job, so no problem there. Uh, going to the Department of Corrections and Retractions. Last episode, I mentioned Trevor Scott and Neil Edwards as pencilers, or actually inkers, on the Unkillables arc in the deceased uh, three three part series there so I apologize to those guys for getting it wrong um, today we're gonna look at the trade paperback the boys it's the first volume and I believe there's six of them total um, and if you don't know this is like a really good deal and let me explain why okay we had uh, the last Marvel comic that I reviewed um, that came out it was 399 and it was 20 pages, so it's 20 cents a page, basically. The DC comic, um, The Unkillables, is actually 40 pages, so that's excellent amount for $4.99. So that comes out to about 12 and a half cents a page. And I'm not including the ads or the covers or anything. And the boys, this one single trade here, which is pretty thick here, has 14 issues in it, 14, the single trade. And that retails for about $30. And I actually got it for 25% off as a COVID special off my, my local store here, um, 2011 Comics. If you're there, please, if you know of them, please stop in and buy some materials. You want to keep them going, of course, a free plug for them. Um, I actually bought three issues. I bought the first, second, and third volumes of this. So I'll be going through those later. But right now, there's 14 issues to knock out on this one. I just want to mention that uh, there's also Amazon Prime that is currently, well, not currently, but they have a, a season or two out for the boys. And well, the same character cast is in it. The same, pretty much, I can't think of anybody that's different. There might be a couple... Um, substitutions here and there, but pretty much the same people. However, the story is changed quite a bit. It's not going to be the same read. So if you've seen the Amazon show and you like it, you might just like this as well. This is a lot more gritty, I want to say. Uh, if you've seen the show, you know that that one's pretty um, gory and a lot of blood and violent. Um, this has got... <laughs> This has got a lot of sex in it. So, violence, gore, blood, sex, and smoking. That seems to be the big one that I see on TV now. Oh, caution me, someone is smoking. But um, anyway, I really enjoyed this. Uh, I recommend it. It's a good value. You can take a look to see if you like the artwork. I've got certain pages pegged here because um, there is a lot of nudity in here. And I don't want to pop up on the wrong page at the wrong time. Um, oh, the other correction I wanted to make, or, or just acknowledgement, was uh, the last episode I had mentioned that I watched another video uh, a review of comics, and the guy's name is Wes, and I could not think of the name of his show, and it is actually Wes runs Thinking Critical, so uh, you might want to check him out. He's pretty good. I just, uh, one of the things that I do, I know for movies, it doesn't really work that well now, but... Um, I used to take kind of, you know, each critic is different. So there would always be one that was pretty close, but he'd get a lot of things that I would end up not liking that he really really liked a lot. So what I used to do was uh, take the rev movie reviews of Pat Travers. It's not Pat Travers. I don't think that's his name. He's the Rolling Stone movie critic, and I think he still is is working there. 
and then Siskel and Ebert. And if all three of them liked the movie, there's like a 98% chance that I would enjoy it as well. So maybe you do the same with these comic reviews. I don't know. But let's get to it. First of all, The Boys is about a group of guys, just normal guys, that have decided to go after the superheroes because of the corruption within the whole superhero genre. Um, it's, the book is written by uh, Garth Ennis. hope I'm selling his name right. And let's go take a look inside here so we can take a look at some of the other characters that are uh, helping out here. Um, there's two illustrators, Derek Robertson and Peter. Uh, I don't even know how to sell that. Is this Snebjerg? Snib, Snibjer, I don't know, who seems to have illustrated the last two issues in this trade, 13 and 14, and uh, additional inks by Rodney Ramos, and color by Tony Avina. So once again, the coloring on this is kind of uh, saturated, kind of muted, uh, uh, and it's got a very cartoonish look to uh, the whole book in general. So... The uh, book starts off pretty much where uh, Huey, this guy, is with his girlfriend, and in an, a freak accident, his girlfriend is killed by one of the soups, as they call them, superheroes. Um, Billy Butcher, it's played by Carl Urban in the uh, Amazon, um, actually recruits him to go after the soups. Um, he... And uh, I don't want to give too much away, but they spend a lot of time taking down the soups. Um, there's seven big guys, or the major league guys. I'm trying to get the glare out of here. And they're called, I forget they're called, but the leader is Homelander. And he's like Superman, basically. And he's the leader. But they're all kind of corrupt. And let's move into the book a little bit. Hope it won't show anything too bad. Um, one of the superheroes who's taken out by uh, the boys and uh, the, has disappeared um, leaves an opening in the seven. So they recruit this this um, young young heroine named Starlight, and she's very naive. And uh, she was in another group of superheroes, kind of a minor league. There's all these minor league of superheroes throughout, um, and these were. Um, how should I say, very highly religious. So they did everything for God and Jesus. So uh, she gets recruited and she goes through a very difficult initiation. And uh, they think her costume is not uh, sexy enough or perhaps uh, eye-popping enough. There's no one of the characters, uh, Queen Maeve, I believe her name is. So they force her basically into this new costume, and she, you can tell she's very uncomfortable with it and all. And I'm going real fast here. So Billy Butcher, this guy here, in the TV show, he's super likable. In the comic, not so much. And he tends to have a whole lot of dialogue. It's not really easy to inter understand because he's got the uh, the dialect. I guess, is it Scottish or Irish? I'm not sure. One of those two. Um and uh, so there's a lot of that going on in here. Um, Huey is a very likable character, and uh, we hope for the best for him, obviously. Okay, let's move on, because it's a huge book here, and I don't want to go way over. We're already at nine minutes. I'm trying not to show any nudity here. And one of the trips they do take is they do go to Russia to uh, find out and they're taking down superheroes all the time, but they're just not going after the seven yet, the most powerful ones. And this is a group of uh, Russian superheroes that was kind of disbanded once communism fell. And uh, their names are great. They have the, the Tractor, the Purge, what's that one? Red Banner, Collective, <laughs> Collect and then the big guy in the back is known as Love Sausage, who has not really aged that well. Here's here's what he looks like now. Love Sausage. So you can take that a couple different ways, but uh, I thought that was an interesting side story in there. They had, they had stuck in there, and uh, I don't want to hit any nudity. Please, no nudity. Okay, one of the other bonuses in here 
I already told you it's like less than 10 cents a page for this thing. Well, it's 10 cents a page. And then with my uh, special deal I got, it was seven cents a page for this trade. So that's an incredible deal. Um, it also includes a script. So you can kind of see how Garth writes his his stories. Uh, there's a lot less detail than I thought there would be in there. And they uh, match it up with an ink on, the, on that side too. So you, uh, you can kind of match the story with what's going on and see how it was drawn, ended up being drawn. Because it does change a little bit. The artist did take some um, liberties here and there. And finally, there's a little bit of a description of who did what and what they'd worked on before. Uh, Garth, you might know him from Preacher. Um, i trying to think what else he worked on. Uh, a Walk Through Hell. I, I was reading that. I didn't really enjoy that that much. It kind of got really re repetitive, and I didn't finish it out. Um, and he's worked on some other things like the Punisher and, but Preacher's the big thing that I think most people would know him for. And finally, let's just go to the back page and here you can see the other six or all six, uh, volumes of the omnibuses for the boys. And I've got the first three, so I might do, uh, volume two and volume three. We'll see how that goes if other things come up. But I really appreciate your time. I hope you enjoyed your stay at the Temple of Tomes once again. Have a great day. Um, take care of yourself. Make sure you get some exercise. Get out there as best as you can. I know some places are really on lockdown. But uh, I really enjoy doing these. And I'll try to keep going on. I hope you're enjoying them. If you are seeing them. And take care. This is Indie Comics Jones from the Temple of Tomes.